actually started somewhere at the end of the 1960s. There were some real early studies on Borneo. Soon after that, some early studies uh, on Sumatra. And even already then, people were wondering whether orangutans were the same everywhere or whether there were large differences uh, in their behavior or morphology or diets. Um, but as orangutans live very long, and you can only follow mostly one orangutan at a time, and we have very few orangutan research sites, it took a very long time to gather, gather enough information to actually address that, that question. And fortunately now I can try to walk you through some of the differences we've been finding over the past year, and with me I mean a large number of researchers. I'm borrowing a lot of information from, from many, many uh, colleagues that uh, have been sharing data with, uh, with each other. Um, and one of the important aspects that will come back through this presentation is that orangutans on Sumatra, which is the Sumatra male on the left, really, um, for them, figs, which are the, these fruits there, are very, very uh, important. And for orangutans on Borneo, bark, which they strip off the trees, is very important. And as you will see, these might explain some of the differences between orangutans. Um, in the early days, people were sort of struck by what they thought were differences between orangutans and bald islands that were purely physical. And some of you might want to guess which one is from Sumatra and which one is from Borneo. Anybody want to try? Yeah. One on the left is from Sumatra. Yay, very good. Uh, and ones on the on Sumatra tend to be a little bit lighter. Their um, uh, flanges tend to be a little bit rounder and a little bit flatter than those uh, on Borneo. But that's not a real clear-cut difference, but they are on the outer end of the spectrum. For females, you see a little bit of the same. This is a Sumatran uh, female. She's a little bit more uh, bright, in her, bright orange. And the one from Borneo, this is Sumi, an orangutan from Central Kalimantan. She's a little bit darker. And what is very important, uh, what I'll try to explain why later, is that one from Borneo tend to have some larger cheekbones. And it's, it's nicely clear on this, this photo, and we'll come back to this. Um, so based on those differences and some genetic differences in the early days, people thought there were two subspecies of orangutans, one on Sumatra, <laughs> Pongo pygmaeus abelii, and one on Borneo, Pongo pygmaeus pygmaeus. But recent developments um, on morphology and genetics actually make a strong case for that we're dealing with two species, one on Sumatra and one on uh, Borneo. And the one on Borneo can be divided into three subspecies, Pongo pygmaeus pygmaeus, Mormbii, and Morio and the Sumatran species became Pongo abelii. So that means that um, we can try to look where these actually live. And the ones on Sumatra are restricted to the north of the island. <coughs> Sumatra is a really huge island, and the orangutans can only be found in this area. The dark gray is orangutan uh, distribution. Uh, which is called the Lozer Ecosystem, and in an area down south, which is called the Batatoru area. And interestingly enough, uh, they're not here, and that might be due to that the majority of people living in this area is Christian, and they tend to eat monkeys and apes, and we think that has a lot to do uh, with the fact that orangutans are gone from these areas, the fact that they're still here is that this is a very uh, high altitude area and it's quite remote and only recently people have been opening up these higher areas and to no surprise there's still one generation down there. Up in the north, um, 
the majority of people are Islamic, they do not hunt uh, any uh, primates, and that means that uh, fortunately for the orangutans, they're still there. The orangutans are not in this area, which came to uh, quite a surprise for us, and we only found out last year that there actually are no orangutans there. We did a lot of survey work there, so that means that the complete somatic distribution uh, is, is actually quite small, it's very fragmented, and some of the habitat is really quite degraded. And so there's only 6,700 left, and according to the IUCN classification, it means that it could be endangered. Um, on Borneo, there's quite a bit more orangutans, there's about 55,000, but they're very unequally distributed among the three subspecies. There's only about 4,000 of the Pongo Pygmaea subspecies. There's about 16,000 of the Morio orangutans in the east, and by far the largest number is for the Wormii subspecies, and they're mostly in uh, this area, and these are the large uh, central Kalimantan peat swamps that you might have heard about. So on Borneo there's at least more, but as you can see, they're very fragmented as well, and probably even more so than on Sumatra, the habitat on Borneo is uh, severely degraded in, in, in many cases. So why are biologists so interested in studying this variation? Well, biologists are, are, are trying to understand variation that occurs within and between species. Between species, an obvious problem is always that even though they might live in areas that are very different from each other in terms of ecology, they uh, split off from each other a long time ago, so it's always hard to really determine whether the differences are due to ecology or due to phylogeny. With orangutans that are closely related to each other, we have a chance to try to look at the ecological differences between the areas where the different species and subspecies live and see whether they can help explain some of the variation we might expect when there are ecological differences. And we'll first turn to some of the differences and then turn to the uh, factors that explain them. Um, as I said, this work uh, comes from a lot of people working at quite a few research sites. The research sites on Sumatra are, there's basically four sites. Uh, these two ones here are very new. One of them actually already closed because it was really remote and funding dried up. Uh, Katamba and Swapalimbing are long-term sites. Katamba started in the 1970s and it's the longest uh, site in London and Sumatra. And Swapalimbing started in the early 90s. And, uh, these three sites are uh, active today. On Borneo, the majority of, of, of data that has influenced the thinking of people about orangutans has come from uh, Dr. Galdikas, her site, which is done in Putin. She published a lot of really new early papers that describes uh, the behavior of orangutans in Tanjung and Putin, and they have influenced uh, many of the yeah, further work on orangutans. Gunupani is a site where Cheryl Knott is doing a lot of work now from out of Boston University. Uh, Subango and Tuanan are relatively new sites that were both started in 2003, but they've been very active and have been generating a lot of really good data. Um, in the east of Kalimantan, there are several research sites. Some of them are not active anymore. They were only active for a few years. And the active sites now uh, are uh, the Nanu Valley and Kinabatangan, and Anantopo is still a little bit active, and Wairoda Sun is a site that's uh, starting up. For the third subspecies, we have very little data because nobody actually went into the forest there to study them. So all we have is some morphological data, but there's no uh, long term behavioral data. Fortunately, there is a research site there now, and people are, are starting to uh, get data from, from that subspecies that will help us in our further understanding. 